instruments and organs and hotels. I look at secretive dreams. I let the struggling days come in and the beginnings also and memories also like an eyelid held open hideously. I'm watching. And then this sound comes, a red noise of bones, a sticking together of flesh and legs, yellow as wheat heads meeting. I am listening among the explosions of the kisses. I am listening, shaken among breathings and sobs. I am here watching, listening, with half of my soul at sea and half of my soul in land. And with both halves of my soul, I watch the world. And even if I close my eyes and cover my heart over entirely, I see the monotonous water falling in big, monotonous drops. It's like a hurricane of gelatin. It's like a waterfall of sperm and sea anemones. I see a clouded rainbow hurrying. I see its water moving over my bones. The mystery of water is a huge subject because we have created a world in which we take water for granted. The crisis is coming. The question is, are you prepared? Do we prefer money over natural resources? Water is the medium of life and the fluid of life. And that is the quality that to me is the greatest mystery of water, the quality of an information carrier. And I'm alarmed by what I'm seeing. I've been working in the oceans, filming them for more than 25 years. The age of civil disobedience to force our politician to act on the environment will start. And we ask at this time that you awaken those that have the responsibility to see that they listen to not only scientists, but they listen to the indigenous peoples of the world who hold the secrets and the respect for water, all these things we ask for. We live in the most ecologically illiterate civilization the planet has ever known. 10.9 million gallons of oil is discharged to our waterways from parking lot runoff alone from the oil that drips from your oil pan in your car. Every eight months in Exxon Valdez oil spill. The resources that they exploit are not theirs. They are public resources. Uh, this uh, privilege should be given only to people who will leave the resource behind for the next generation. I think um, it's really important that we go into the schools and we teach our children so that they can make good decisions about, about what they're drinking. You can take a parking lot. You can make it porous and in the soil is the bacteria and most importantly the fungus. When they see a molecule of diesel fuel, they're like, oh goody, here comes dinner. And they render that once perceived toxin or pollutant into food. But water quite happily absorbs all this uh, material and it carries it away. And in the process of doing that, it breaks it down, reabsorbs it, it redistributes it, and it washes, washes the world. So if you can't turn the byproducts of the, that process into food for the next cycle, then you shouldn't make it. The first thing we have to recognize is that water was revered in the ancient times as mysteries and is the carrier of life force in the body. I had this uh, heart condition and I visited with all the finest cardiologists uh, that we have available here in the United States. The only way he felt he could save my life was to crack open my chest and to cut off the bottom of my heart. When I met with him and I, I said that I've been using hydrotherapy <laughs> and, and this is why I'm feeling so great and things are working, he said, well, he said, you never know. Your heart could have healed itself. When I went to medical school, there was not one real course on water, and yet our body is 70% or more water when we're young, gets less as we age. In fact, one of the greatest uh, causes of long-term illness, I think, is that people become slowly dehydrated as they age. We're a carbon-based life 
system on planet Earth, structurally. We're carbon, but the lubricant and the elixir of life, the, the metabolic processes of this life, is all lubricated by water. I know people will, will probably wake up and realize that it's more important than anything else. Without water, we cannot live. In 50 years or so, perhaps less, the ocean will be co corrosive to the shells of most animals. Now, if that happens, then the food chain of the open ocean would very much uh, collapse. And that uh, is uh, a big, big problem. And the Book of Revelation is also finding things, but it says the last time I characterized as an ecological catastrophe, the blessing of water are withdrawn from all living creation. I think that there is a warning for all of us to treat water with respect and as, as the Spirit of God. So if there is such a thing as life, where does that come from? How does it work? Is it a byproduct, or is it the essential creative element? We came, when we're born, we come through water. When early people mm, were near water, they knew they were near something holy. That's why we as Māori live so close to streams. We, because we knew that without water, we don't spiritually exist. Each human being on the planet has individual freedom, yet has a cohesion with all of humanity and all of nature as a whole. But nature's essence as such is water when it comes to life. So they're almost synonymous, really.